Good evening. Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. The victims were in airplanes or in their offices, secretaries, businessmen and women, military and federal workers, moms and dads, friends and neighbors. Thousands of lives were suddenly ended by evil, despicable acts of terror. The pictures of airplanes flying into buildings, fires burning, huge, huge structures collapsing, have filled us with disbelief, terrible sadness, and a quiet, unyielding anger. These acts of mass murder were intended to frighten our nation into chaos and retreat, but they have failed. Our country is strong. A great people has been moved to defend a great nation. Terrorist attacks can shake the foundations of our biggest buildings, but they cannot touch the foundation of America. These acts shatter steel, but they cannot dent the steel of American resolve. America was targeted for attack because we're the brightest beacon for freedom and opportunity in the world, and no one will keep that light from shining. Today our nation saw evil, the very worst of human nature, and we responded with the best of America, with the daring of our rescue workers, with the caring of, for strangers and neighbors who came to give blood and help in any way they could. Immediately following the first attack, I implemented our government's emergency response plans. Our military is powerful and it's prepared. Our emergency teams are working in New York City and Washington, D.C. to help with local rescue efforts. Our first priority is to get help to those who have been injured and to take every precaution to protect our citizens at home and around the world from further attacks. The functions of our government continue without interruption. Federal agencies in Washington, which had to be evacuated today, are reopening for essential personnel tonight and will be open for business tomorrow. Our financial institutions remain strong and the American economy will be open for business as well. The search is underway for those who are behind these evil acts. I've directed the full resources of our intelligence and law enforcement communities to find those responsible and to bring them to justice. We will make no distinction between the terrorists who committed these acts and those who harbor them. I appreciate so very much the members of Congress who have joined me in strongly condemning these attacks. And on behalf of the American people, I thank the many world leaders who have called to offer their condolences and assistance. America and our friends and allies join with all those who want peace and security in the world. And we stand together to win the war against terrorism. Tonight I ask for your prayers for all those who grieve, for the children whose worlds have been shattered, for all whose sense of safety and security has been threatened. And I pray they will be comforted by a power greater than any of us, spoken through the ages in Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. This is a day when all Americans from every walk of life unite in our resolve for justice and peace. America has stood down any enemies before, and we will do so this time. None of us will ever forget this day, yet we go forward to defend freedom and all that is good and just in our world. Thank you, good night, and God bless America.
My fellow citizens, at this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger. On my orders, coalition forces have begun striking selected targets of military It's 8.52 here in New York. I'm Brian Gumbel. We understand that there has been a plane crash on the uh, southern tip of Manhattan. You're looking at the uh, World Trade Center. We understand that a plane has crashed into the World Trade Center. We don't know anything more than that. We don't know if it was a commercial aircraft. We don't know if it was a private aircraft. We have no idea how many were on board or what, is, what the extent of the injuries are right now. We are. Uh, we have. I understand an eyewitness on the phone right now, sir. Sir, good morning. This is Bryant Gumble. Could you tell it? Could you give us your name? Yeah, my name is Stuart. Stuart, where are you right now? I'm working at a restaurant in Soho. All right. So tell us what you saw, if you would. I literally. I was waiting at a table, and I literally saw a. It seemed to be like a small plane. I just heard a couple noises. It looked like it like bounced off the building, and then I heard a. I just saw a huge, like ball of fire on top, and then the smoke seemed to simmer down. And it just, um, you know, a lot of smoke was coming out, and that's pretty much the extent of what I saw. Can you tell us about the scene down there right now? Um, right now, people are just on the street looking at the building. The building, it was just a lot of smoke. Um, it's not too crazy down where I am. How, but, um, how far away from the World Trade Center specifically are you? I'm actually on Thompson Street North. It's, I'm not too, too far. It's 8.54 right now, Stuart. Can you tell me when this happened exactly? I would have to say about 10 minutes ago. Were you looking up as the plane approached the building, or did, you, did it only call your, catch your attention after it, uh, it crashed into the World Trade Center? I heard uh, like a sort of a crashing sound, but I looked up, and I looked up quick enough to actually see something go into the building, but everything happened so fast I wasn't quite sure what I was looking at. So there's no way you can know whether or not the plane seemed to be in trouble before, no, no. before it crashed into the building. Oh, no, I, I, no, I couldn't tell. It's, it's hard for us to tell um, from the picture we're seeing just uh, how far down from the top that plane crashed. Um, have you any better eyesight to it um, from your vantage point? Not really. All I know is it definitely wasn't the top, top of the building because that seems to be intact from what I saw. Obviously, um, the, uh, the timing of this is, is important. Um, it comes before 9 o'clock. Um, perhaps, perhaps, and, and, and we say that in hopeful fashion, perhaps not everybody was at work um, because uh, if, if that building was in fact crowded with, uh, with workers, we're looking at, uh, at, at probably some, uh, some casualties and, and, and injuries of, of considerable proportions, but, uh, but right now there's, there's no way of telling that. We're on the line with um, uh, another eyewitness. Um, sir, this is Bryant Gumbel in New York. Oh, how um, you doing? I'm fine, thank you. You're Wendell? Yes, I am. Wendell, can you give me your last name? Klein. Wendell Klein. Um, tell me where you are, if you would. Well, right now I'm in the back in the hotel. I'm in the hotel offices here, the front office. You're in the, okay, where were you when the, when the... I, I was standing right in front of the trade, um, the hotel. I'm the doorman there. And, um... The hotel, the hotel, which hotel? Marriott World Trade Center. Right across from the World Trade Center. It's actually right in between. Them. Right in between the World Trade Center. Yes. Okay, so you were standing outside, and tell us what you saw and what you heard. Well, well what I, I heard first, an explosion, and I just figured that it was a plane passing by. Then all of a sudden, stuff just started falling, like bricks and paper and everything. And so I just kind of like ran like inside to get away from the falling debris and glass and so forth. Then after like everything stopped because it like was falling in the street and the cars were catching to each other and then when it kind of stopped i heard a guy screaming and when i looked over there was this guy that was on fire so i kind of like ran over and i tried to like put the fire out on him and he was he was like screaming and i just told him to roll roll and he said he can't and then another guy came over with his uh, bag and kind of like put the, fl the flames out on him so Right now, um, he's being taken care of. I just had everyone call the ambulance and stuff so it can help him out. He caught fire as a result of the falling debris? Yeah. Um, how much debris, can you give us an idea of how much came oh, crashing man. to the ground? It's just a lot. Um, bricks, a lot of bricks, a lot of glass. 
um, I'm like enough to like damage cars on the street, make cars swerve into each other, that kind of thing. I hear alarms going off down yeah, there. What, the, what's what's happening? That's our hotel alarm, and basically, I guess that went off automatically. They've evacuated everyone in the hotel. They evacuated all employees. They have of. evacuated the hotel. Yes. Immediately. Yes. Are you hearing anything, Wendell, about what kind of a plane it was, no. or or no. how many were on board? No. All right, Mr. Klein, thank you very much, sir. I understand Teresa Renault is with us right now. Ms. Renault, good morning. Good morning, how this are is, you? This is Bryant Gumbel. I'm down on uh, 59th and 5th. Where are you? I am in Chelsea, and we are at 8th and 16th. We are the tallest building in the area, and we, my window faces south, uh, so it looks directly onto the World Trade Center. And I would say, you know, approximately 10 minutes ago, there was a major explosion from... Probably, it uh, looks like about the 80th floor. It looks like it's affected probably four to eight floors. Uh, major flames are coming out of the, let's see, the north side and also the east side of the building, yes. And it was very loud explosion followed by flames, and it looks like the building is still on fire on the inside. Um, which building are we talking about, the one that's westernmost? Um, Let's see. Yes, sir. Did you hear the explosion oh, from yes. your position? Yes, we did. As a matter of fact, we we heard it, and and because I was just like standing there, pretty much looking out the window, I didn't see what caused it or if there was an impact. So you have no idea right, right oh, now. Oh, there's another one. Another plane just hit. <gasps> right. Oh. oh my God! Another plane has just hit. It hit another building. Oh. Flew right into the middle of it. <gasps> explosion. Oh my God! It's right in the middle of the building. This one into the east tower. Yes, yes, right in the middle of the building. And right now, that, yes, that was definitely looked like it was on purpose. You saw a yes, plane? Yes, I just saw a plane go into the building. Why do you say that was definitely on purpose? It, because it just, it just flew straight into it. It looks like it's about, uh, I would say 15 floors lower than the first building, and there is now flames coming out of that building as well. They're both completely on fire. Now, Teresa, hang on with us one second. We're going to uh, we're going to re-rack the tape of when we were talking to you to see if we can tell. Okay. Um, we can't see anything. We can't see a second plane in the picture. There, we see the explosion. Two. Take two and two, one. This is as close as we can get to the base of the World Trade Center. You can see the firemen assembled here, the police officers, FBI agents, and you can see the two towers. A huge explosion now raining debris on all of us. We better get out of the way!
know. Good evening. Today, our fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. The victims were in airplanes or in their offices, secretaries, businessmen and women, military and federal workers, moms and dads, friends and neighbors. Thousands of lives were suddenly ended by evil, despicable acts of terror. The pictures of airplanes flying into buildings, fires burning, huge, huge structures collapsing, have filled us with disbelief, terrible sadness, and a quiet, unyielding anger. These acts of mass murder were intended to frighten our nation into chaos and retreat, but they have failed. Our country is strong. A great people has been moved to defend a great nation. Terrorist attacks can shake the foundations of our biggest buildings, but they cannot touch the foundation of America. These acts shatter steel, but they cannot dent the steel of American resolve. America was targeted for attack because we're the brightest beacon for freedom and opportunity in the world, and no one will keep that light from shining. Today our nation saw evil, the very worst of human nature, and we responded with the best of America, with the daring of our rescue workers, with the caring of, for strangers and neighbors who came to give blood and help in any way they could. Immediately following the first attack, I implemented our government's emergency response plans. Our military is powerful, and it's prepared. Our emergency teams are working in New York City and Washington, D.C. to help with local rescue efforts. Our first priority is to get help to those who have been injured and to take every precaution to protect our citizens at home and around the world from further attacks. The functions of our government continue without interruption. Federal agencies in Washington, which had to be evacuated today, are reopening for essential personnel tonight and will be open for business tomorrow. Our financial institutions remain strong and the American economy will be open for business as well. The search is underway for those who are behind these evil acts. I've directed the full resources of our intelligence and law enforcement communities to find those responsible and to bring them to justice. We will make no distinction between the terrorists who committed these acts and those who harbor them. I appreciate so very much the members of Congress who have joined me in strongly condemning these attacks. And on behalf of the American people, I thank the many world leaders who have called to offer their condolences and assistance. America and our friends and allies join with all those who want peace and security in the world. And we stand together to win the war against terrorism. Tonight I ask for your prayers for all those who grieve, for the children whose worlds have been shattered, for all whose sense of safety and security has been threatened. And I pray they will be comforted by a power greater than any of us, spoken through the ages in Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. This is a day when all Americans from every walk of life unite in our resolve for justice and peace. 
America has stood down any enemies before, and we will do so this time. None of us will ever forget this day, yet we go forward to defend freedom and all that is good and just in our world. Thank you. Good night, and God bless America. My goodness.